of my supply. Lord, I praise, I lift you high. I will sing hallelujah, oh Lord. I will sing hallelujah, I will sing, oh Lord. I will sing hallelujah, oh
source of my supply. Lord, I praise, I lift you high. I will sing hallelujah, oh Lord. Sing hallelujah, oh Lord. to go to God in prayer. And as we go to God in prayer, the altar rail is open for you to come and kneel or stand as you are able. And there are prayer cards available in your pew racks. And for those of you who are worshiping online, you can um, put your prayers in the chat or you may... um, Email us at prayer at atlantafirstumc.org. If it's a confidential prayer, please send it to pastor at atlantafirstumc.org. There are so many people on our prayer list and so many things on our hearts and our minds this morning as we pray. We want to give thanks and remember Miss Ruth Marie Jackson, the mother of Sandra Jackson, who died on Saturday, April 15th in Ohio. We remember Miss Ruth fondly. Before COVID, she would travel to Atlanta and worship with us several times a year. And we're so grateful for her life and for her influence. Her funeral was held uh, yesterday, April the, on Friday, April the 21st. And let us be sure to lift Sandra Jackson and her family in prayer. We also, can t- we also pray for the family and friends of Reverend Holda Wilson, um, especially my mom, the Reverend Dr. Jackie Rose Tucker, um, who Dr. Reverend Wilson um, died on Sunday, April the 16th, and her celebration of life services will be held here at Atlanta First on Saturday, May 6th at 11 a.m. Many of you will remember her as a unrelenting champion for Christian education, um, to be in a small group, to serve, to find a place to serve, no matter what, in the presence of God and through the church. And so um, please lift her family, my family, up uh, in prayer as we plan to celebrate her life, um, May 6th. We continue to lift up today um, gun violence in this nation and around the world. Uh, We lift up our nation, uh, grieving families and friends. I've talked to several folks in our congregation and through our congregation who continue to grieve the loss of loved ones over the last few years in ways that they had not anticipated. And we also lift up what's going on in Sudan and global unrest all over the world.
Gracious and loving God, we've come to worship this morning in this place and in places all over the world. We've come to tarry in your presence, oh God. We've come to lift our voices in praise and to shout hallelujah because you are God and you are God alone and you saw fit to give us another day. You saw fit to give us an opportunity to praise you and bless you, oh God. You saw fit to give us an opportunity to tell those things that happened. <laughs> when you got up from the dead and with it you raised up all power in your hands oh God and with it you remind us that you are with us that you never forsake us that if we had 10,000 tongues we could not praise you enough oh God Lord, you have risen indeed. And because you have risen indeed, we can face right now and we can face what is ahead, oh God. When there are trials and temptations, when there is trouble, when we are discouraged, we find in you a faithful friend, oh God. When we are weak and heavy laden, when we're carrying too much, oh God, you remain our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in the time of trouble. You said in your word that if we just give our burdens to you, then we would not have to bear them alone and that you would lighten our load, oh God. So we've come today expecting that you are already at work on our behalf. We've come today, oh God, that you are lightening the load, that you are the master healer, that you are the master comforter, that you are the great I am, that you are the prince of peace, that you are the burden bearer, that you are the sorrow sharer, that you are the weakness carrier. Oh God, we give thanks. And we pray that we will not keep carrying our pain alone, but that we will take everything to you in prayer, oh God. That we give thanks for the lives of Ruth and Hulda. That we give thanks for those who have invested in Bible study and small groups, oh God. We give thanks that you are in the midst of every situation that's going on in our lives, that we do not grieve alone, oh God. That nothing is happening outside of your awareness, oh God. That you're giving us opportunities to come to you, to return to you, and to heal our land. So forgive us, oh God, when we don't take you up on that. Forgive us when we continue to lean into policies that create more death, oh God. 
Forgive us, oh God, when we move on and expect everyone else to move on from the things that hurt in this thing called life, never healing from anything. And spewing our brokenness over everything. Lord, do what you do best. Have your way. Have your way, oh God. And help us to be people who live by your will. Lord Jesus, we thank you for teaching us to pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. And we pray it boldly today as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In prayer. One of the ways that we put action to our prayers is through the giving of our tithes and offering, giving thanks to God for what God has so generously given unto us. We give... First of all, I want to thank you for your generosity. During the Easter, during the Lenten season, we were able to put together nine, Mary, nine baskets for well wrote family services for those who are transitioning out of foster care and into independent life. And we give thanks to God for you. for doing what you had to do to ensure that nine individuals have what they need to start independent living. Thank you. We give generously today for we know that God continues to call, that God gives us resources so that they might be shared with others. So today you can give securely online through Cash App, through Text to Give, by mailing a check, or you can give special gifts through the finance office. This is the time to say thank you to God, and it is the time to be generous with our resources. where we left off on Easter Sunday. If you turn in your Bibles or your electronic devices uh, to the Gospel of Luke, to the 24th chapter, you'll see that just before the 13th chapter where we're starting today, that it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who went and told the disciples that the body of Jesus was gone, but that the angel said that he's risen. Did y'all hear that? 
that he is risen. And, and that, and to remember that he told you that Jesus must be handed over to the sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. But then it says, but these words seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. Luke chapter 24, beginning in the 13th verse, reads like this. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman, women had said. But they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, 
The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Open our eyes and our hearts and our minds, O Lord, to see you among us, to hear you among us. Break open the bread of life so that when we leave this place, we will know that we were in your presence. And therefore, we have been transformed. Take this, your servant, and hide her behind that old rugged cross so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever been in the midst of chaos or grief or shock? Things that should make sense all of a sudden don't make sense. Things that should be clear are murky. Things that should be difficult, things that should be easy are difficult. You miss things, you forget things. Things that you wouldn't otherwise miss. Some people describe it as walking around in a fog. Have you ever been there before? Cleophas and an unnamed disciple are walking around in a fog. They traveled to Jerusalem for what they expected would be an ordinary Passover gathering. And instead, they ended up witnessing the greatest tragedy and miscarriage of justice to date. The crucifixion of Jesus. And now, they are living in the aftermath. Before they left for home... They heard that the women had been to the tomb to check on the body after the Passover celebration. But the body was missing. Who could have done that? But then then Mary said that Jesus was resurrected. But we can't trust her word. So what do we do now? I don't know about you, but it feels to me like we're living in a what do we do now time. That we're living in a space and in a time where every day there is some catastrophic event that just blows our minds and we wonder, what do we do now? Mass shootings. Children dying, people fighting, people at each other's throats, housing is unaffordable, mental health care is unattainable, the world just seems out of control. What do we do now? Yeah, I know Jesus said that he's with us always. I know that we have the Holy Spirit as an advocate. I know that God says he will never leave us nor forsake us. But these days and times, I wonder if this thing is even real. Thomas doubted. We can too. We can wonder about this resurrection that we enter into each and every day. We can wonder if God really cares about the number of head on our heads. But we have to listen. 
Cleophas and the unnamed disciple were going down the road to Emmaus with a bunch of rumors swirling around in their heads. Rumors. They saw that Jesus was dead, but rumors that he might indeed be alive. Rumors that his clothing was off of him and left in a tomb. Rumors that the women saw angels. Rumors that Peter... <laughs> Peter didn't know what to do with himself. So just like us, they were doing what we do with rumors, right? My Auntie Holder would say, jaw jacking. Jaw jacking, jaw jacking about the rumors. They were discussing the rumors that they'd heard. And then a stranger approached them. And he said, what you talking about, Willis? Okay, maybe not like that. But he said, what are you talking about? And they stood still shocked. What do you mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about the same thing everybody else is talking about. Where have you been? stupefied, standing still, frozen, downcast. They said, haven't you heard? Have you heard the things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth? You see, he was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priest and our leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death and crucified him. But we had hoped. We hoped that he was the one we hoped that he was the one that would save us. We hoped that he was the one that would deliver us. We hoped that he was the Messiah. But now, remember what the word but does? It negates, it erases everything that comes before it. But now, it is the third day. See how they didn't explain what's supposed to happen on the third day? The rumors and the hopes, somewhere between rumor and hope, they lost their way. Somewhere between rumor and hope, they forgot the expectation. Somewhere between rumor and hope, they forgot who Jesus is. Somewhere between rumor and hope, they forgot the rest of the story. And instead... They said, but now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and they couldn't find his body. They came back with a story that was so unbelievable that we sent some of our male friends to the tomb to check it out. And they didn't see Jesus. So their story can't be true. We're going to miss some things listening to the wrong people. Eugene Peterson's translation of the message says that this is what Jesus said to them. So thick-headed. So slow-hearted. Why can't you simply believe all that the prophet said. 
Don't you see these things had to happen that the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? And then Jesus started at the beginning with the books of Moses and went through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. You see, what is happening is that until now, the people have been drawn to Jesus because of his presence and what he has done in their presence. They have followed Jesus because of what they have seen. They have followed Jesus because they have been able to verify somebody else's story by looking at it themselves. How many of us get caught up that way? <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil. How many of us get caught up? We heard a story. We heard a rumor, Miss Mary, but we don't believe it until we see it for ourselves. And the problem here is that Jesus is about to ascend to heaven. There is no more proving Jesus by placing him in our sight. So what do we do now? Do we say it was all make-believe? Do we say it was a fairy tale? Do we say that it was just a story caught up in a book that was old and dusty? Do we say, oh, that's just a story my grandmama told me a long time ago? I, I know she believed it, but nobody has proven it to me. <laughs> Do we say, that's just a story for those folks who have been to Disciple Bible Study, Carol? Do we say that's just a story for those folks whose lives are going the way that they want them to go? Do we say it's just a story for those who are privileged? Do we say that it's just an old, old story and it means nothing to me now? But we had hoped... Until now, the people have been drawn to Jesus by what they've seen. So the question now becomes, how will they know him now? How will the mamas and daddies of little babies gunned down at school know that Jesus is real now? How will those that don't know where their next meal is coming from know that Jesus is real now? How will those who get beat up on the front steps and the side steps by the drug leaders know that Jesus is the protector now? How will they know that this isn't some old, old, baked, out of date, way over story? How will they know that the resurrection is for you and for me and for them right now? quiet in here. I said, Jesus is risen. Y'all said. Jesus is risen is the best news we've ever heard. And you're sitting here looking at me like somebody died. Yeah. 
Have you heard about Jesus? But how will the next one hear? You see, we're still on the road to Emmaus. <laughs> We're still talking with each other in little cliques and groups, and we're still saying, is this real? Is this real? Did this happen? What, what now? What do I go now? What now? Is Jesus going to show up for me? Is it going to happen the way I want it to? Is it going to do? Da, 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 da. What color is the carpet going to be? What to, who's going to change the light bulb? Who's going to do? Blah, 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 blah. Are those people worthy? Are those people allowed in here? Can they be my pastor? Can they do? What What does my faith tell me about this and that and the other? Should I fight about the Supreme Court or the Congress? And Jesus is standing on the side of the road. And is looking at us, listening to our nonsense, and wondering how will they know what the prophet said? How would they know that there was a baby born in Bethlehem where nothing good could come out of Nazareth and he turned out to be the savior of the world, that he did indeed go to Calvary, that he was indeed resurrected for you and me, that he is alive today. And working in each and every one of our lives and each and every one of our situations. How will they know? But why are we not talking about who Jesus is? Why is our faith wrapped up in people and not in the Savior of the world? People will fail you every time. They're going to find something bad to say about everybody. They're going to test a lie all over the world to make you look however they want you to look. You cannot have faith in people. Your faith must be in the one who died for you. They came to the edge of the village of Emmaus and Jesus acted like he was going to go, go on to the next one. This, this would have been the right thing to do at that time because you had to be invited to wherever you were going. You just didn't show up. <laughs> but they invited him. They said, stay and have supper with us. Let's back up here for just a second. When's the last time you invited Jesus into your life? When's the last time you invited Jesus into your situation? We're standing back saying, where is the Lord? Does he care? But not one time have we said, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. There is no other help I know. Help me! You don't hear me this morning. They, they invited him to supper, and, and then the supper started to sound familiar. <laughs> when, when they got to the table, Jesus turned into host instead of guest. He, he turned the rumor into real hope. He, he, turned, he moved the rumor to a place where it was no longer rumor, but it was fact. He, at the table, invited them to remember who they are, remember who he is, and to remember that their response is to go and share the story. When he was at the table... He took bread. Sound familiar? <laughs> On the night before Jesus died for us, he took bread. On the night of that ordinary Passover meal, he took the bread. 
on the night where he gathered the disciples before he went and gave himself, gave himself for us. He took bread. He breasted the bread. He broke it. And he gave it to them. Click. No more stranger at the table. Then their eyes were opened. They recognized him. And he vanished from the their sight. What if... While we're busy discussing the rumors on the road to Emmaus, Jesus is standing by waiting for an invitation, waiting to break the bread in our faces, waiting to be revealed, waiting to remind us that God is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, that death has no victory, that death has no sting, that the rest of the story is resurrection, the rest of the story is triumph, the rest of the story is abundant life, the rest of the story is that there was a little boy from a nowhere place who showed up and saved the world. Hallelujah! <laughs> Rumors. I heard, they saw, maybe, I don't know, hopes we had hoped. When they saw crumbling dash hopes, Jesus was walking with them, and Jesus was right there fulfilling their hopes while they were stuck in Rumorville. Bread, we experienced confirmed hope that revealed and transformed. Come on, Ms. Denard, I'm wrapping up here. In the bread we experienced him, the hope was confirmed and revealed, and we were transformed. And you know what happened next? Have you heard? 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 Do you know what happened next? Have you heard? They kicked up some road dirt. They couldn't run those seven miles fast enough to get back to Jerusalem and to tell them all the things that Jesus said to them. Oh, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. All in the same day, <laughs> the women went to the tomb early in the morning. <laughs> they saw that the body was gone. The angel said that he is indeed alive. They went and told the, the disciples, the, the boys, they couldn't believe it. Peter went and looked for himself. He still couldn't believe it. He went back home and went back to sleep. Cleophas and the unnamed disciple got on the road back home sharing all about the rumors and then about their hope and then they kicked up some road dust to go tell everybody else have you heard about Jesus who died on Calvary he died for you and me. He died to set us free. Has anybody heard about my Jesus? He's always there. Can I get a witness this morning? <laughs> Through every one of your trials, he's the only one who really cares. The songwriter says you can call him every day, even when you can't find your way. He'll be there to supply your needs. He's the only true friend indeed. He's the greatest friend of all. Have you heard? 
<laughs> Have you heard about Jesus? You can see he's always there through the times of all your burdens. He's the only one who cares. He's the greatest. Y'all know that song? Have you heard? He's the greatest. Have you heard? He'll be your friend until the end. Have you heard? He's always near, so don't you fear. Have you heard? Yes. Jesus loves you. Have you heard? Don't let the rumors stop you. Don't let what you think are dashed hopes betray you. And if you need to kick up a little road dust, do it. How else will they hear about Jesus? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. He's the greatest friend of all. <laughs> And if you haven't had an opportunity to meet him yet, I want to take this time to invite you to Jesus. We'll partner you with someone who has known the Lord for a while and who can teach you about this Jesus, the one who broke the scriptures wide open on the way to Emmaus, the one who broke bread with Cleophas and the others in Emmaus, the one who gives us life brand new when everything around us says that life is over. So won't you come? And if you're looking for a place to, to be in love with God and to lean into this life with Jesus, Atlanta First United Methodist Church is that place. Whether you're in the sanctuary or online, you are invited to come. If you are online, send me an email or put it in the chat and we'll connect with you. Because the most important thing is that you have life in Christ and that you kick up some road dust going to tell some others about the one who has come to set you free. as we prepare to go forth from here do not go forth from God's presence there are going to be some rumors this week that seek to distract you and seek to dash your hope but stay focused stay focused because the one who has come to give you life and give it in abundance is with you so stand as we sing this song this benediction song together.
go forth as one who is blessed so that you might be a blessing to others. Go in peace. Amen.